Anxiety disorders is the, one of the most common mental health conditions in the United States, affecting up to 40 million Americans. Evidence has shown that an imbalance in our gut microbiota has a great influence over our brain health via the gut-brain access, which can affect our anxiety. I have lived with anxiety since childhood, and little did I know that perhaps my chronic gut issues were partly to blame. My name is Marcy Vasky, and I'm a functional medicine nutritionist specializing in gut health. So I work with individuals who struggle with bloating, gas, constipation, diarrhea, and that's really just to name a few things. And so if that sounds like you, or maybe someone you love, I am going to link our website down below where you can easily make an initial appointment with us. Or if you're the kind of person who likes to do things on their own, I will also link our free guide, which is five ways to improve gut health. So let's dig into today's topic. Today I'm going to share with you my personal story of my life lived with anxiety and poor gut health and how I keep them both in check today. Now my story starts at about age 7 when I had my first run in with a gut issue. I woke one night in extreme pain not knowing what it was, ran up, I woke up my parents and with an almost run to the ER, I was just soothed with some ibuprofen and some snuggles from my parents. But what we didn't realize at that time was that it might be a gut issue. And starting in about third grade, I remember being sick to my stomach all the time. Stomach aches would kind of come and go throughout the day. And at that time, I grew up in the 80s and there wasn't really any food sensitivity testing done. And so, you know, who knows what it was? Marcy just has a stomach ache. And as I got into my teens, that's when the anxiety really started to peak. And I, looking back now, I realized that I was also, you know, experiencing anxiety even as a small child, but didn't really have a word for it. So as I got into the teens, anxiety was spiking and gut issues were getting worse. More constipation, bloating, gas, stomach aches. It seemed never ending. I lived in a world of always having something wrong with my stomach and my anxiety ebbing and flowing depending on what's going in life, but always that underlying current of anxiety. And it wasn't really until I got into my 30s where I started to deep or dig into it and try to figure out what was going on. Up until then, I was just self-soothing, right? I mean, we're in high school, I went to college, so I self-soothed with drinking and also an eating disorder that kind of got out of control. So as I got older, I graduated from college, I realized that, you know, I kind of, I wasn't getting to the root cause of gut stuff or even my anxiety, but you know, life had to go on, got a job, got married, all that stuff. And so then in my 30s, I ended up having twins. And after I had the twins, I just was, I was done with it. I had to figure out a way to feel better. And after I had them, I did end up going on Prozac for my anxiety. Obviously, having twins was a little stressful for me, although they were great little babies. But two at a time really took its toll, and my anxiety just heightened extreme. And so using the Prozac kind of took the edge off, which, which helped and helped me then calm down, calm my gut down, and try to then dig into what was going on with my gut and how could I get these things set right. Now, during the time that I was on the Prozac, I knew that was not a way that I wanted to treat myself. I knew that there was something deeper and bigger underneath it all and I needed to figure it out. But in the meantime, I stayed on that and as I did, I actually had more gut issues. At that time, a few year, a couple of years into that, I ended up doing a bodybuilding competition. So the diet was extremely restrictive, and you know a lot of things that I wasn't eating, I had put in, and kind of all of this stuff. And I, what I recognized is that um, increasing my protein was really helping, but the diet that I was on also required a lot of fat-free stuff. 
And that was just terrible for my gut because of all the additives in it. And of course, fat-free products have sugar in them too, which just is more inflammation. And so it was the last week of that prep where I had to take out many things and really stick to basically like four foods for five days or six days or something like that in preparation for it. And I felt amazing. It was crazy. And so after that, meaning my gut felt amazing, right? I should clarify that. So soon after that competition, I thought, all right, obviously some of the things that I'm eating are really causing problems for my gut. Now, at this time, I hadn't gone back to get my master's in nutrition, so I wasn't working as a nutritionist at the time. Um, and so I was kind of learning things as I was going. I was starting to starting to get into my schooling, but I wasn't licensed and I, you know, I didn't have all that background that I have now. But as I was learning for myself and how to heal that and what I needed, it really has helped me in today's, you know, in today's counseling that I do with clients. However, as I took, what I did was I took a food sensitivity test and, you know, that. I just thought I had to start with something and it seemed like foods were obviously my problem so it it was a good place for me to start and the results came back with extreme amounts of food sensitivities which wasn't super surprising to me because you know during that last week of that competition when I took out all these foods and I felt amazing I figured that it was going to be pretty pretty severe what came back and so I then took out all of those foods and what was remarkable is that my gut felt so much better but I knew deep down there was still healing to do so I had to dig and keep discovering what those things were so looking into research I realized that with my gut such a wreck that obviously that was kind of that was increasing my anxiety levels and as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, what we know is that our gut microbiome affects our brain very much so. And the way that this happens is that it affects the neurotransmitters. One easy way to think about this is if you have low good flora in your gut or that microbiome, you are not going to make enough of your neurotransmitters to help calm you down. So things like serotonin and dopamine. And clearly that's what was happening to me. So as I took the foods out and started, you know, kind of revamping my meals and my diet all together, my gut calmed down. And lo and behold, I had less anxiety. And so it was a perfect time for me to decide, okay, I'm gonna go off this Prozac because the side effects were getting just really annoying and, and, and all in all, I just didn't wanna be on a medication. So as I began to heal my gut, I stopped the Prozac, titrated off of it slowly. Once I was done, then I used something called 5-HTP to kind of get me over that edge of, when you come off an anti, or a um, SSRI. And doing that 5-HTP helped me create more of my own serotonin along with all the gut health that I was working on and making some really good neurotransmitters in my gut. So I was on the 5-HTP for a short time, which really just helped. I, I think it was probably three or six months that I took that. And then, I realized, then after I stopped it, I realized that the things that helped me the most by keeping my anxiety at this normal level would were things like protein. I realized that if I wasn't eating enough protein per day, that I would have a little more anxiety the next day. And so that's something I still pay a lot of attention to today and making sure that I'm eating enough protein to make the neurotransmitters in my gut that I need to so that I can calm myself naturally the way we're supposed to. Now, of course, there's genetic anxiety that runs that we can be predisposed to, right? And of course, I have some of that in family, of course, and some of you may too. But there's so much we can do to kind of get a handle on it. It doesn't have to be the severe anxiety that then, you know, kind of, it, it, it touches every place in your life. 
including your gut. So as the gut gets more unwell, your brain can be more unwell. And once you have anxiety, the gut is also infected. So it's like this cycle of stuff that can happen. Meaning when your anxiety is high, your gut can get clenched. And I know even today, if I, you know, something stressful is going on or, you know, just super busy, whatever it might be, and I feel like that anxiety is just rising a little bit more than I'm used to, my stomach will definitely tell me I'll get bloated or I'll just have a stomach ache. And so it's just really, it's listening to ourself and finding, there's a, finding that root cause to help yourself best. And finding my root cause really took a moment for me to just reflect on my childhood. And I realized that I was likely dairy intolerant from a small age, maybe even a baby, because my mom said that I was kind of a crabby baby and colicky. And so having that, you know, continuing to drink and eat dairy products all growing up took its toll on my gut, which therefore increased my anxiety. I will always need to be mindful of my stress levels and my gut health and therefore I have taken some of these foods that initially were causing a big problem out of my life and diet permanently and while some of them were a little tricky it has made such a world of difference for me I'm healthy I'm happy and my gut doesn't hurt every day and I don't feel like you know I can't focus and I'm just wired tight I'm calm and I think you know getting rid of a couple of foods in my experience and this isn't for everybody obviously has really been worth it for me I share my story so that if there if you're out there listening to this and you're thinking wow that that kind of sounds like me maybe I need to look into this further or you know can I just do some of my own gut health perhaps you can but if you feel like this is, you know, your anxiety is pretty high, your gut's always bothering you. I do recommend that you work with a practitioner and I would be happy to work with you. As I said in the beginning of the video, the link to our website is down below and you can make an initial appointment because I know how much anxiety and gut health can affect your everyday life. It's not fun. And so getting healthy and living a life as I've moved through the process of this, I would love to help you too. And so you can live your best life just as I am.